is pretty much the only thing he's thinking about. He is a hardcore competitor. Now, most of the time, he doesn't compete anymore, but it seems like when he does, he pretty much gives it his all. Grubby can absolutely look very terrifying here. And from what I've heard, he's been throwing in some custom games. He's been uh, practicing, for example, with, uh, what's his name? Cruncher quite a bit. So he was getting ready for this, for this game and for this tournament. And we'll see how well he does against uh, one of the best Europeans. Exactly. Hawk, not to be underestimated, he took quite a break from Warcraft after Dreamhack, I feel. I haven't seen any tournament results from him. He wasn't in Rust Brain, he wasn't in the Taker tournament. But yeah, let's see if uh, he's in shape or if Grubby is just plowing through him. Grubby might even be the best orc in Europe at the moment with Cash playing a little bit of random with Spiral off racing. So who else? Maybe Cooper in. Uh, in the competition there as well but i think it's finally time to to kick off this game this next round of 16 is grubby versus hawk here we are and i see a farseer and i see oh. a warmill ladies and gentlemen farseer hammer boys it's back it seemed like a bit of a gimmick for a while then it seemed really good and then everyone stopped playing it it was, of course, first being popularized on the high level by Kiwi Kaki from Canada. And Grubby also played it, refined it, played it very well. But we saw it somehow uh, slipping out of the meta again. But Grubby always able to pull it off here. And we're going to see it now once again. If you're playing against the Orc, so, so, seeing something like uh, Farseer Headhunters, is this something you prefer seeing, Todd? Or how do you approach that strategy? Yeah, not many people do it, and Grubby does it like super flawlessly. Like he's the, he's got the best execution of it. I was watching uh, in sub stream I think two days ago, and he he described it really well. Cause I asked him how would he compare Hitman and Grubby, and he said, well, Hitman in standards, it just seems like he's super well rounded. He's good at everything. Like his execution is just so good. Grubby not as good as at standard, but absolutely insane with headhunters. He's like the best by far at that style. So he was saying it's probably what he should stick to, and I kind of agree with that. I feel like if I play against his standard, I'm less worried than if I have to play against this awkward headhunter style that you don't really know how to counter because he's the only one who does it, and he does it so well. Last hit number one goes to Hawk. That is the level two. So Grubby not as disruptive as he would love to be. Still zero experience, and looks like Hawk. Knows exactly what to do, a little bit of pressure on the fast here. Yeah, I would say that it was always Grubby's uh, strength to prepare for his opponent and come up with some cheeky strats, not cheesy strats, but you know, a little different from the standard. Um, always setting up some traps. And so far, this trap backfires a little. Yes, yeah, super solid play so far by Hawk. The creep route right away where he left the camp early to let the militia finish it. Go over to the green, get the level two uncontested. Really good positioning of the militia. If you slip a little bit here with the reaction time, quickly militia can start falling. Quickly you lose last hits. One goes down now, but that's okay. The lumber mill is coming up. The tech has started. The tower is about to upgrade into an arcane. The time of the wolves, at least in the main, is drawing to a close, but solid defense here so far by Hawk. I was worried a little bit that the Shadowlands might interfere with Hawk's strength and potential Hopefully here in this tournament. But of course, back. he's a veteran. He is a, a super strong player. I feel like especially this last half here, he has looked amazing, Hawk, over in Europe. Yeah, and actually, for a while, when we would see him against Orc, or as of late, it was always the double Sanctum style, which by the look of things here is going to be there. Against Headhunters, it makes a lot of sense to go for that. Rifle's not quite as good. There is a few timings you can try and attempt. That one Footman, ooh, I'm surprised, no deny here from Hawk. And Grubby, like, this is a very strong timing here with Headhunters. Like, they do very well against Footman. He is also trying to make sure he knows which fountain Hawk would head to if he was to try and go to any. And once you have like five headhunters, then you can start creeping yourself. Because you know that the human's gonna have a hard time engaging into you. Like we see like Defend hasn't even started yet. So Grubby easily could go for like the merchant, for example. Yeah, I remember uh, in the season two uh, tournament, five Grubby kind of destroyed Blade online. with his headhunter style. Blade didn't seem to be too I ready against it. Hawk after that, I have seen played against this uh, headhunter style as well. Dollars. And also talking about it, and what Hawk, at least back then, said that this style of headhunters isn't really all that good if you know how to play against it. 
with like level 3 MK and uh, fairly early pressure and maybe even expansion. I think is his attempt. Uh, we'll see how he decides to play against it here. Is Grubby gonna go headhunters and stay on tier 2 for a while and expand? Or is he gonna go for that what that style that he showed against Blade before where he's going for walkers, tier 3, and then torrents to get really strong on tier 3 then? He just wants to please you with a couple of torrents, doesn't he? There is a torrent totem coming, TC as well. So at least one torrent will be on the battlefield. I think so far the headhunter timing is working out pretty well. He prevents the Archmage from level 3. He didn't lose a single headhunter. He's disrupting the creeping even further. Farseer is in a little bit of uh, trouble with only 80. But there's almost no damage on Hawk's side as well. So human gameplay slowed down for sure. And Grubby's buying time for his tech. It doesn't take much to please Remo. Like, if you human, go rifles <laughs> in a fire. If you or get bloodlust. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. And torrents, of course. But yeah, I like the lumber mill here from uh, Hawk pretty early. I've been talking to Death Note. He's obsessed with his lumber mill these days. He keeps telling me, man, it's so perfect. You get a lumber mill, then you get enough food, then you take the expo. <laughs> and I agree with him. Like, it's really the key to being able to expo and fix all your lumber issues because double sanctum is very costly in lumber. And you're going to want to go for that expand pretty quickly. It's very rare that you would ever stay on one base here. Grubby's attempting to pull in the center, but not near the tavern to trap it. Get smart. He will trap him, but on the left-hand side, which is really rare. So Hawk will not expect this. And this is one of the prime example of a grubby play. Like, do something your opponent is not prepared for, what he doesn't expect. And the element of surprise is giving you that edge. But the Ogre Lord oh. says, ah, ah, not with me, my friend. Archmage is here. Big last hit to be grabbed up. Oh. Oh, didn't close. get it, but it was, it was kind of close. Kind yeah. of. MK coming in. There's no stomp here yet, so hardly any spells for Grubby to use. He's gonna TP out, losing one headhunter only. Takes out a footy as well. Got the red camp item. I would say overall a pretty decent trade for Grubby, but that TP being gone is definitely a bit dangerous moving towards the late game stage. I wonder if Hawk might expand in center here. He's not sending militia just yet. He's going to four priests. A little bit unusual. Usually you just stop at three. And we've seen some humans skip sorceresses entirely. I wonder if he's going to go into breakers. Usually Hawk is the guy that will go into a lot of breakers uh, in fist style and skip sorceresses entirely. And then he'll just target heroes with, uh, or rather the Torrent Chieftain with Stone Bolts and his additional breakers. We see the tier 3, by the way, almost ready. It is the double Torrent Totem. It is going to be Torrents. And then the question is, how do you shut down Torrent? if you're not going for a lot of Sorks or something, because Breakers are definitely going to lose the front row battle. Yeah, it's also a lot about creeping here. Who can creep more right now? Map control is definitely with Hawk right here, as his MK Stormbolt is pretty good right now, and also uh, Clap will be coming in. The Aura helps out, and Sorks could be dangerous as well. I mean, in this case, we don't see Sorceresses, but we have uh, decent damage on the human side. Not the greatest yet. Hawk... Runs back to his side of the map, retreats to his natural. Is this time now to expand? We look in the main. Militia coming over. Yep. Hawk is being very indecisive. He sent Militia to center earlier, then he sent them home. So he was like, okay, I'm not going to expand yet. Then he sent them to the expo and one wolf was coming down. He's like, oh, I don't want him to see that I'm expanding. So he sent Militia back home again. And now for the third time, they're coming out. And this time it's going to be for real. He's actually going to take it down there at, against this style i feel like he should maybe mix in a few salt resist but we see those walkers we need to pay attention to the mana here they're gonna have uh resurrections with uh, ancestral spirits available which resurrects what units again remo can you remind me <laughs> grunts, grunts right maybe I, do, do they I heard work? i heard the legendary walker player saying they can revive grunts next patch maybe next patch something to keep in mind in reign of chaos <laughs> actually no not even <laughs> One wolf scouts the peasants down there. If this was a level 2 wolf, this would be dangerous for the peasants. But since it's only level 1, the expansion should be coming up. Grubby has the confirmation now and does have the Berserker upgrade. Doesn't want to give this Rock Golem over to Hawk. The MK will be getting very close to level 3. Stormbolt, slow down. The TC, nice clap as well. And the last hit, an item goes to the MK. Wait, did the Farseer steal the last hit? Yeah, he did. Oof. And that's level 3 for the Torrent Chieftain. 
Item was the big healing here, but on the other side, Grubby found the greater mana, so he will certainly be happy about that. The Farseer is a damage dealer. That's something you don't say very often with the two claws. Going over to the red spot. This is a lot about like treasure hunting at the moment, of course. Hawk trying to buy some time, and that expo is already hurt. So are the walkers, but here's the fight. Oh, the, the caster oh, the coming creeps. in. Oh, the creeps getting involved. This looks like a very bad fight for Hawk. We have the Shadow Honor here now with Heal Wave. We have the Tauren ready with good damage and also Ancestral Spirit about to be ready. The Berserker, which is a, a signature grubby move, just passed by the front line with Berserker on, maybe with a speed scroll, going for the casters in the back right away. This way, the fight gets very uh, discombobulated, very weird to micro, but now the Berserker is getting slowed in the back and perhaps chased down, but everything for Hawk is super hurt. Gotta be careful with that Archmage now. Torrin is coming in, trying to catch up even further. Next, Headhunter falls as well. Man, what a scrappy fight this is. 47 versus 41 supply. Next Bolt goes, uh, not next Bolt, next Storm goes into this Mountain King, who has a big potion. Maybe it's a little bit of an overcommitment. Storm Bolt is ready in his tag. Now it is. Can he fight out? He's trying with the Town Pond. Storm Bolt on the TC. But everybody should be safe, thanks to that TP. Who got the better end up of this? Hard to tell. The expansion came up in the meantime for Hawk. He lost some units, but he also took out a lot of Berserkers. We only have one left right now. And the rest of the army that's coming in is going to be Walkers and Torrents. Grubby could fall back to his side of the map, go for a tiny Great Hall if he waits a little bit. But he wants to creep a little bit more. It's going to be coming down a lot to hero levels. If this Farseer gets three and the Shadow Hunter as well, this would be tremendously strong heroes for the army. Yeah, the, the best way for Grubby to win with this kind of composition is just to get to like 70 or 80 supply. Even if he's on one base, then with Breaker and Casters, you almost cannot win anymore because anytime you kill anything, it gets resurrected instantly. He gets Scourge Bone Chime. And for some reason, the Orb and items are all on the Shadow Hunter. He's got 21 agility against the Farseer's 20. Maybe that's why. Yeah, he's that's got serious. faster attack speed, so makes sense, I guess. Serious Fighting mid Torrent at the Fountain. Okay, this would be <laughs> another level of bravery that I've never seen before in my life. Not even Sonic would go for that one. You sure? Davai, Davai. Grubby at 60 supply. He's going Davai. That Orb of Lightning, by the way, can be very helpful against the Breakers to purge them. Usually it's very hard to control them, but here we see the Purge coming through. Blizzard and Clap active, but also passive healing for the Torrents. Let's scratch bone chance. A lot of attention on the illusion. There was wasted damage. Shadow Hunter heals himself for probably the last time. There's no Stormbolt anymore. Spirit Link saves that Sage, who's completely out of mana, moves him back to the fountain here. And the Breakers seems like they're quickly disappearing thanks to the Torrent AoE. Chain Lightning can't finish anything in the back because there was a heal scroll keeping the army of hawk ready and now he's aiming for that hero and guess what grubby doesn't have a tp anymore doesn't have a potion it's an eye for an eye here at the moment farcia he's kind of becoming a powerful powerful tank he wants to sacrifice for that hero kill it's one break it could be two shadow hunters still a little in danger here but hawk's army is so bruised both well, trying to make it back to the fountain there of course free healing can be achieved mk almost with another storm ball this could be the next hero kill Shadow Hunter in trouble, but gets away. Spirit Link protects him for a little while longer. So many torrents now. Hawk can fight the torrents. He has to attack everything else. He's almost a stomp. Two more mana. But he's not on top of units that he can stomp right now. Probably using the fountain as well here with the Spirit Walkers. His style lends super well to that map. Thanks to the Aura, he's able to chase the casters and he's taking them out. They're trading blow for blow, but Grubby is now on 65 supply against 51. He's got a peon in the center. Maybe thinking about expanding, maybe throwing down a shop for clarities on the Shadow Hunter. And with that Shadow being so close to level 3, that's going to be a giant power spike. Hawk realized that he could not kill the units because they would be resurrected anyway, so he went for the heroes, but he's only killed one. And I think he's in quite a bit of trouble now. Yeah, and how important is the level 3 fast here at this stage of the game? I think, of course, the TC is the most important one. Apart from that, Shadow Hunter progress is the second most important one. Chain Lightning is nice to have, but... Yeah. Not the biggest deal to lose a fast here. He's got to be careful with these torn. If they get surrounded, they might end up dying here. That's the next Storm Bolt. That's the next surround. That's the next hero of Grubby without any survivability on it. The Torrents can do big damage here, though. Look at the pulverizers. Oh, <laughs> my God. That is pure damage, by the way. Not reduced Archmage. by anything. Archmage just killed. TC gets healed last second. Quick reaction by Grubby. And the Flying Dutchman takes map number one.
with a with its very own style, with a fast year headhunters into Torrens. Really cool. Hawk before said that he's not so worried about this strategy, that he knows how to deal with it, but here Grubby gets the victory. The health fountains certainly helped out quite a bit, with the torrents so valuable to have, with Orc in general, so valuable to have with how much money you can save. Is that a style that's only very good on Concealed? Or will we see it again? We're gonna find out. That was a pretty good opening match. The beginning maybe not as crazy good, as uh, we see from Kibikaki sometimes, but what a follow-up there. Once the headhunters were paired with the Farsi, I think Grubby got more and more ahead, and there was a certain ceiling for the Strat of Hawk, even though he had the expansion running. It wasn't really the case that he could overwhelm with mass anymore. The Grubby's army was just way, way better coming from Tier 3 and being so powerful with walkers and torrent that you can resurrect, and with the tri-hero combo that went online. Yeah, it's very hard. If you're just going to have this army, you have only a very short timing before the walker starts having a lot of mana and then they resurrect everything. And we saw he was doing the right thing. He was trying to go for heroes, but all Grubby has to do is like pull back correctly, minimize the damage that's being dealt to his heroes, use a healing wave. And those torrents, they pulverize away at everything if you ignore them. Like as soon as you go inside of the, that line, it's like over. Like you lose everything instantly. So... Yeah, I think not the best game from Hawk in terms of start, you know, like he lost like one peasant, he lost a lot of mining time, maybe like the newer builds that we've seen from human where you go like double farm tech with arcane tower might be better against this. And uh, after that, maybe the expo was also a little delayed because he ended up having that like fight in the center where he did force a TP, yes, but uh, the item was already acquired and, uh, and then the expo, like you cannot have it that delayed, I think. Whenever Grubby steps into a tournament, he seems like he's very, very well prepared. And today is not different at all. Let's see if Hawk can come back. We go back to our Match Reno page where we have more contributions from you guys. You don't stop. We have one on one and two on two crowdfunded, but you guys just don't stop. Global Cannibal with a 10. Michal with the 15, 20 by Medium Hazel. Varian Vrint with the 10, Chiller with the 5. Go, Grubby, go! Uh, Russian contribution for the 10 flux you with the 50 not only building the best servers possible but also donating to the cause thank you mate Zara this tournament is always awesome and I feel that's pretty much uh, the point here everybody loves this tournament Snowfall with the 20 just with the 20 Hitcha with the 5 Arc Saber 10 Alpha with the 10 so many people helping out it's fantastic and also us here on our stream, thank you for the contributions to Kefka Time with the 17 months, EP123 with the 10 euros, Bumble Bear with the 4 months, Nasa with the 6 months, Manic Twig with the gifted sub, Eichel Zalad with the 6 months, Jebe with the 13 months, Zipzap with the 13 months, Kai Katze with the 54, Sparta with the 16, Nultz with the 3 months, Nahor, Nahor, Nano Hertz, there we go, <laughs> with the 2 gifted uh -huh. subs. Sid Ma Sid New Laws with the 50 euros says, thanks for all the fun, Bon Ane. All this Walker 3 players speaking. 48. Who can Damn. beat this? Neo soon. <laughs> Calling for life with a 12 months. Remo, Remo, really? You the want to start you... this when we're 24 days away from your big birthday? Really? And I'm always younger than you. <laughs> the Wilk with the 26 months. Champesque with the 44 months. What a legend. Thank you very much. Real Tour Ninja with the 11 months. Real Tour Ninja also with five gifted subs. Even more. Thank you very much. And Barlin with the 10 months. Guys, thank you all very, very, very much. What is it that War 3 Champions tournaments are always crazy? Seems like you because guys are enjoying the best it. community here. And so, we, so are we. So are we. I think it's yeah. very unique, right? Because it's a ladder race. It's a ladder race. Like, it's the only one that we've got that leads into a playoff tournament. So it's like there's all this build up. People are trying to qualify. And then, like, you get a drawing. I think W3 Champions, they're just doing so many things right that people are super hyped around anything that they are doing at this point. Like, it's so amazing to watch guys like uh, you know improve from season to season as well. Like now we went into sixteen players, so yeah, big fan of them, and uh, I'm not surprised that this is getting a lot of hype. Yeah, there's also like a special participation here in this tournament for season two. It was Grubby for season three. It was you, Todd. Now we got both of you plus the first Korean participant in Mikhail. So there's there's always something new and exciting. And for the next season, we got two and two added to the mix. So 
yeah, the, the progress at W3 Champions never really stops. And these guys were working through Christmas and New Year's. I was monitoring uh, the dev chat a little bit. Just they pour their hearts into this server, and it's wonderful. So, Concealed Hill is probably the map for the Grubby slash Kiwi Kaki strategy with the Farseer, the Headhunters, and the Tauren especially, thanks to the fountains and thanks to the layout of the map. So next one is Amazonia, and I'm quite curious what we'll see here. Normally, certainly Farseer should be the play here. Unless your name is Cooper, Farseer should pretty much always be the play against uh, humans. Seems to be working out better, but then again, uh, some other players like Coopers may disagree. But Grubby here is going with a Farseer and with the Grunt build. Normally on this map, we see a fast Lightning Shield creep on the Orc side for a quick level 2. And of course, Malicious creep on the other side. This Lightning Shield creep for the Orc has been looking so strong that quite a few humans over in Asia have been playing MK Power Build Alter with Instant Harass. And that sounds completely nuts, but it has been having some decent results. It's of course, though, susceptible to being scouted and then counterplayed. This is not what we're going to be seeing from Hawk. No MK here, just AM standard. And that sort of surprises me, especially over in the Netty scene. This is supposed to be an Orc map where the Farseer gets off to a good start. The TC can start creeping really, really well early on. And then with level 2 or level 3 TC, you can creep jack the human pretty easily on this map. So Hawk, he had the loser's pick and he chose Amazonia. I wonder why. Yeah, it's hard to creep like past level two here uh, eventually like if they stay on top of one another and when the second heroes come out that's where it's really, like really tricky to creep so maybe it's like counting on that like obviously if you go double sanctum you're gonna have more ability than someone who has you know seven headhunters and just two heroes maybe just play more of the same for hawk with better execution that might be the plan but he opens up with a ring creeping peppers That doesn't feel good. Arsio with the claws again. He had two claws last game. One of them plus uh, 12. Land on the Shadow Hunter at some point. And gets the fast level 2 over here. So does the AM. Gauntlets! No damage for him. Some tankiness for the MK later, but that's still quite a ways off. Yeah, the two defensive items is always the worst here. Like, you really want to have some extra damage because when, once you get level 2, it's all about clashing, it's all about fighting for camps. Then again, against the Farce here on this map, you know that there is chain lining. So you cannot even go for, like, you know, the small orange camps in the corners. Even the Murloc here might be stolen. Okay, no. I think he didn't want to use the mana for that. I mean, he did a small creep. He's going to get the tome, though. The sacred text! He stole it! <laughs> Unbelievable. He ran into his library and yoinked the book out of there, just like in Westworld. And seems like these level 1 head tight hunt runners are not worth the chain lightning. It's gonna conserve the mana over there. Woofy's in the main, but good reaction. No peasants here going down yet. Militia chasing them away. Tech has started. Is of course a little bit ahead, Players as is the norm for the orc. And there's a peon AFK in the main. Ooh, that might lead to some lumber problems. Hawk on the other side has to deal with the wolves over and over. So it's a little bit of militia time. We don't have a lumber mill this game. So maybe lumber issues on both sides. Hawk at 70 and half of the tech might be a little late with that as well. I'm surprised Hawk is the one chasing Krabby right now. <laughs> I think you could just click on like footmen, try to put some of them low. And then when you have this much mana and double chain lining, you can always end up killing stuff. He's the one with the claw as well. So it feels like maybe Grubby's thrown off a little bit by how aggressive Hawk was trying to be just now. But he's still staying on top of him. He's not going to let him creep. And this Troll Berserker, if you put him very low and then he gets chain lining and stolen, this is very bad. He really cannot have that happen. Great movement here by Grubby. He's coming in to threaten the last hit steal. He's putting damage on the footies. And in the meantime, he's still getting stuff done with the other Grunt. Wolf and Grunt were in the south, creeping the rest of the camp. They are getting a little bit more experience for the Farseer. It's definitely a tough early game here for our Players human player. Farsi could easily secure the last hit. Right click, chain lightning, there we go. At least the item goes to Hawk. A little bit more HP again. That's definitely <laughs> what he needs right now, eh? For I mean, the MK. At this point, the MK is almost out for whom it is pretty nice. And we see a blacksmith, by the way. We're going to have some refills coming in. No double sanctum this time. 
Hey, it looks like he might have been trying to conceal that because he waited a long time before he started it, but yeah, I mean on on maps where it's harder to creep, such as this one, it's very common nowadays. Actually on Conceal Hill as well, we see so many humans. Especially in Asia, they all go for rifles because it's just so hard to creep a double sanctum. With rifles, they have so much damage, it's way easier. But yeah, Hawk. This was scouted immediately here by the wolf. So Grubby has a great opportunity to adjust to that. He's already got three grunts. The way you play against this is that you get more grunts than usual. And then you just kind of know the timings of like when to fight. And uh, usually the goal is always to get TC level 3 very quickly and then go fight before Mountain King is level 3 and then just dominate. This is a really strong early by Grubby. He's got the level fa 3 farce here already. The wolves can be so strong against breakers. It's a double-edged sword because they can get stolen, but against uh, rifles they should always have value. And especially having them this early, really good. He stole away the enemy kobold. He's getting pretty much solo creeping for the TC at his own kobold. And now he can maybe creep the Murkham, but then continue harassing. Or he's even trying to go for the Merchant Steel, which would leave very little for the MK. But the MK is coming in, and Hawk has to contest for these creeps. That's really crazy. Like, the Mountain King is already in trouble. Like, where's he supposed to creep afterwards? Maybe go for the Murlocs. He needs this last oh, he hit. Kicked. Oof. He missed, like, the storm on the wolf, but he still got the last hit. Oh, that was almost a disaster. Damn. I can't believe he bolted a wolf. Turn to coming now. That's the problem for sure as he went for Aura first. Army is a little split here now and Mountain King strength, Stormbolt singling out units surrounding them, killing them. TC level 2 now has some mana to spend. These militia will not have a great time probably, but still problems for Grubby to reunite his army. Yeah, there was like yeah, a almost... one... There was a one hit point wolf standing there for like five minutes. I cannot believe he didn't kill that. Almost looked like Grubby was going to overextend right there, lose quite a bit, but he got the TC level up and he only lost one grunt so far. The wolves are just so strong right now. Yeah. This is the strength of a fast level 3 Farseer. There's no despool yet, so dealing with them is super hard, and the TC still has plenty of stone bolts to use. Yeah, this yeah, spell the is being with the, the wolves in combo with the end snare, good radar control, pulls them back. Tatsu too, Grubby might be overextending but not the case so far two units still on the silver pattern here that footman goes down rifleman chased by the wolves pays one grunt for it maybe even saves it with the healed scroll scrappy fight once again a little reminiscent of the uh, one in the mid game on concealed hill yeah that scroll was pretty nice here for a grubby definitely bought him some time the rifles just keep dying fast here might have to tp in a second throws the storm bolts and he does Get the town portal on time here. I think this was an amazing fight for Kirby. 43 supply oh. now to 35. A grunt Ryan is on the chase in the main base. Oh, oh! Saving Private Ryan! Save him! Save block. him! Block! <laughs> oh my god, he didn't block. He's good. He's good. He's fine. He's fine, right? Don't worry, guys. It's all good. Damn, even the grunt. Yes, he though. Two more hits. Should be fine with the speed scroll, even. Grubby making double sure to get this grunt back home to heal him up. T TC is getting close to level 3 with this spot. Blender of Illusion can be very nice as well as we get Lightning Shield upgrade. And yeah, the last spot close to his main base of Hawk. It's not enough for level 3 MK, though. I think Hawk is in big trouble. He's not even done with the camp. Oh my god. Okay, well. Uh -oh. Archmage gets caught. Uh -oh. He might force the town portal away from the rest of the army. Oh, this is a disaster. Uh oh. Okay. That's two units falling, but it's also the oh, four, three units. Yeah, oh that's a little God. bit of a feast for this TC. And the rock golem will be going to Grubby as well. A little bit too ambitious. What else was there to do? Not much, but Grubby with a presence of mind knowing exactly where and when to strike, and he has such a huge lead now. That's the massive problem concealed you, uh, on AZ, excuse me. So hard to creep the MK, you can always get creep jacked. This is why I was so surprised to see this map coming through. The strength of the fast level 3 farts here catapulted Grubby so far forward, and he's been playing with his lead very well. MK is trying to do his best right now, with the claps coming through, but there are counter heal scrolls against it. Militia holding the line for as long as they can. Lightning shield in the middle of everything. There's not enough mana for a dispel right now. Heal scroll oh on the my. human side as well. Another clap comes through, but we also have oh. more chain lightnings, more lightning shield, and more stomps, and Hawk is just losing 
everything. It's becoming a little bit of a tradition that Grubby slaughters the best European human in round one of these W3C tournaments. A surround on the Mountain King, wonderfully done with the Wolves, the MVPs of this game probably. And that's double G, that's 2-0 for Grubby and Todd in the W3C season finals. Back to the Shadowlands.